Welcome to Movie Caps. Today, I will show you an action crime thriller from 2008, titled, Rock and Rolla. Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The film starts with a narrator telling us what a rock and rolla is. Everyone wants the good life. Everyone wants fame, money, and power. But a rock and rolla is different. According to the narrator, a real rock and rolla wants the lot. He wants everything. Later we learn that the narrator in question is Archie. The movie starts with an introduction to Lenny Cole, who is a crime boss who runs the underworld and the real estate market in London. Archie, Lenny's second in command and the film's narrator, tells us everything we need to know about him. Moving on, later, when a wealthy Russian property developer, named Yuri Amovich, approaches Lenny for assistance on a significant new deal, Lenny jumps at the chance. Initially, Lenny tries to sugarcoat the deal as he wants the money. But Yuri is a person who likes to go straight down to business. He cuts off Lenny's sugarcoating, and straight up asks him the value. Lenny replies, 7 million euros. Yuri agrees to pay, but only if Lenny borrows his lucky picture as a sign of faith. Yuri then asks his accountant, Stella, to transfer the money to Lenny, but Stella is a double-crosser. Lenny doesn't know this, but she sells out the fact that Lenny is transferring a huge amount of money. She arranges for a gang of robbers known as the Wild Bunch, led by One Two and Mumbles, to intercept the money before it reaches him, and divide it among the three of them. To make matters worse, the lucky artwork has been inexplicably stolen. Lenny starts to panic as he knows the painting is Yuri's favorite. Lenny's estranged stepson, crack-addicted rock singer Johnny Quid, is singled out as the prime suspect. When Yuri gets to learn of the robbery, he isn't bothered, as he wants to get this deal over with. He hires vicious goons to reclaim his money. He also says that there should be no problems. While this happens, Lenny urgently tries to locate the picture. In order to locate Johnny, Lenny and Archie enlist the help of his old record producers Mickey and Roman, in order to avoid having their performances and clubs shut down. Meanwhile, on the night before his court date, handsome Bob is devastated, because he is facing a five-year prison sentence. Bob's party is planned by 1-2. One 1-2 two. One two tries to cheer Bob up on the way to the party, he lets Bob know that he has lots of plans for him, but to no avail. Bob still remains unhappy. It seems obvious he wants to say something but cannot say it. In the end, when inquired by 1-2, Bob comes out too, and confesses that he has a crush on him. 1-2 is disgusted and instantly stops the car. He gives Bob a look of loathing and leaves the vehicle. 1-2 is confused, as Bob is known as the lady killer. How can he be a homosexual? He shouts at him, feeling embarrassed about the whole thing. However eventually, 1-2 maintains his composure, and since Bob is distraught and it is his final night as a free man, he inquires as to what he would like to do. Mumbles is surprised when 1-2 declines to attend Bob's court hearing the next day. When Mumbles tells 1-2 that everyone knows Bob is gay, he tries to explain that something happened between him and Bob the night before. Later we come to know that Bob is acquitted, as the prosecution has lost his papers. This was done by Archie. Bob is happy, but now 1-2 is frustrated, as he engaged in something sexual with Bob, as his last wish before going to prison for five years. Now that he has been acquitted, his sacrifice seems to be in vain. Everyone, including Bob, is now making fun of 1-2. 1-2 is incredibly embarrassed about the whole thing. We learn why Quid is the way he is, deranged and dangerous. It was due to his history of violence from his father figure. Later, Quid tries to enter Mickey's pub, but the bodyguard does not allow him to enter as he has no money. But Quid does not care, and attacks the bodyguard with his favorite weapon, a pencil. The race to find the deranged Quid goes on. When 1-2, Mumbles, and Bob attempt to take another load of Yuri's money, they are shot and pursued by Yuri's hired mercenaries, who engage them in a shootout and a long foot chase. It is one action-packed chase that involves a high-speed chase, followed by a car crash of Yuri's car. They then take the money from Yuri's car. However, now they are being chased by Yuri's mercenaries, they still manage to run away, although quite injured. Later they deliver the money to Stella, as they always have. By this time, Yuri has become irritated, and suspects Lenny of being complicit in the theft of the money and his picture. He confronts Lenny, but Lenny, due to his ego, shouts back at Yuri. Yuri smiles as Lenny does not understand the danger of the situation. Yuri has Lenny severely assaulted, and demands that the picture and money be returned. The scene changes, and we have Johnny Quid, and he is met by three people who claim to be his followers. They sit at his place and expect Quid to talk to them. He asks Pete to ask them to leave, as they seem to be junkies. However, 
When they are about to leave, we learn that the three people are Cookie's men, and they have stolen the painting right under Johnny Quid's nose. Stella visits one too, and they engage in sex. Two item peddling junkies steal Johnny's painting, and sell it to the wild bunch, and one two immediately delivers it to Stella after they have sex. Stella is amazed that one two has the painting. Mickey and Roman track down Johnny, and contact Archie to arrange for his delivery. Later, Yuri's men get hold of one two in his apartment. These are the same men that tried to kill him when he stole the money. However, Archie learns that one two has the painting. He takes the men and goes after him. When he gets there, he learns that Yuri's mercenaries are there. Archie and Lenny's men go after one two. They assassinate the mercenaries and kidnap one two, Mumbles, and Handsome Bob, who had come to provide the identity of a well-known police informant in the London underworld. Despite his right-hand man saying that Stella is not to be trusted, Yuri still goes to visit her. He is in love with her, and her love has blinded him to the truth. Yuri shows up at Stella's house to finalize their plans, and asks her to marry him, since he has been captivated by her for quite some time. Immediately after asking, he notices his fortunate picture in her living area. She claims she's had it for years when asked how long she's had it, not realizing it's actually Yuri's. While she had no idea, Yuri felt outraged and deceived. He forgets all the love he had for her, and minutes after proposing to her, he instructs his associate to kill her. Meanwhile, Archie transports Johnny, the Wild Bunch, Mickey, and Roman to Lenny's warehouse. On the way to Lenny's warehouse, Johnny keeps on bugging Archie. Later, despite Archie's warnings and threats, Johnny keeps up with his shenanigans and verbally provokes Lenny. Despite the fact Johnny was his son, Lenny shoots him, after he mentions the incident when Lenny snitched on Archie. Johnny, Roman, and Mickey are then brought downstairs by Lenny, who demands that the Wild Bunch tell him where the money is hidden. At this point, the Wild Bunch has understood the situation has gotten tense, and that anything could happen now. Thus, Bob speaks up, stating he has the address. Archie accepts the paperwork from Bob's jacket pocket, which reveals that the informant, codenamed Sidney Shaw, is Lenny. Archie now understands the whole scenario, and now confronts Lenny. Lenny apologizes, but it is to no avail. Archie gives Lenny his trademark back of the hand slap treatment. In exchange for his release, Lenny had made a deal with the cops, to hand up several of his associates at any given time. With this new information brought to light, Archie frees the wild bunch, and kills Lenny. Despite being loyal to Lenny, Archie had to kill him as he was the reason he had suffered in jail. However, it is not about going to jail, it is about being betrayed by the people you trust. Lenny broke Archie's trust and had to bear the cost of it. His life. In the meantime, Johnny, Mickey, Roman, and two of Lenny's men are in an elevator, on their way to a spot where Lenny's gangsters will execute them, and dispose of their bodies. Johnny being the clever guy he is, informs Mickey and Roman in detail about how they will be killed along with him. This is largely due to his history with gangs, due to his connections with his father. This genius move by Johnny prompts Lenny's men to act prematurely, but thanks to Johnny's warning, Mickey and Roman react in time, and after a struggle, manage to kill the gangsters holding them captive. Johnny also kills the gangsters at the bottom of the lift, waiting to escort them. They all escape, but are met by another henchman at the end. All the efforts for the escape seem futile, and all hope was lost. However, the Wild Bunch saves them from the final remaining henchmen, with 1-2 delivering the final blow. The last scene shows Archie returning from the hospital, with a rehabilitated but still eccentric Johnny Quid. Johnny now says he is a changed man, and has left all his addictions, except for maybe a cigarette occasionally. They exchange jokes here and there until Archie offers him the painting, the expensive Yuri's lucky painting. Johnny accepts Archie's offer of Yuri's lucky artwork as a peace offering and welcome home present. He will now become a true rock and rolla. The credits show that one two and Bob had danced together the night before Bob's court hearing. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.